Hello everyone. Welcome to a personalized episode of Enlightenment. Today, we delve into the contrasts between human and artificial perception, explore the nuances of concierge versus Wizard of Oz prototyping in product development, and examine how leadership influences the effectiveness of agile methodologies. Join us as we navigate these insightful topics, tailored just for you. What makes neural networks perceive the world differently from us, and how can this understanding improve their mimicry of human sensory perception? This compelling question lies at the heart of a new study from MIT neuroscientists which delves into the fascinating world of deep neural networks, DNNs, and their unique way of recognizing stimuli. Today, we'll explore these findings, uncovering the mysteries of machine versus human sensory recognition and what this means for the future of AI. Deep neural networks, a cornerstone of modern AI, have shown remarkable abilities in identifying objects and sounds akin to human sensory systems. They can recognize a dog regardless of its fur color, or a word no matter the pitch of the speaker's voice, demonstrating a level of invariance that mimics human perception. However, MIT researchers have discovered a captivating twist in the tale of these computational models. When tasked with generating stimuli similar to a specific input, such as an image of a bear, DNNs often produce outputs that are unrecognizable or heavily distorted to human observers. These findings suggest that while DNNs can identify objects and sounds like humans, the way they perceive and process these stimuli is fundamentally different. This phenomenon of generating model metamers stimuli that the model perceives as similar but are unrecognizable to humans, highlights the model's development of unique invariances. These invariances are idiosyncratic, meaning they are specific to each model and diverge significantly from human perceptual systems. The term metamer itself, borrowed from classical perception research, originally described colors that appear identical to human vision despite being composed of different wavelengths of light. The use of this concept to understand DNNs opens new avenues in evaluating how well these models mimic human sensory perception. The study's lead author, Janelle Feather, and her colleagues, including Josh McDermott, an associate professor of brain and cognitive sciences at MIT, embarked on this research to better understand the organization of human sensory perception and how DNNs can be improved to more accurately replicate it. Their findings are not just academically intriguing, they hold practical implications for enhancing the performance and reliability of AI systems in tasks requiring sensory recognition. One of the most significant insights from this research is the realization that DNNs develop their own unique set of invariances through training, which can lead to wildly different perceptions of the same stimuli compared to humans. This discrepancy raises questions about the fundamental differences between artificial and human intelligence, and how these differences can be bridged. The researchers also explored the potential of adversarial training to make the model's generated stimuli more recognizable to humans. Adversarial training, a technique developed to improve the robustness of AI models by exposing them to slightly altered inputs during training, was found to make the model's metamers more human-like, though not identical to the original stimuli. This finding suggests that such training methods could be key to developing DNNs that more closely mimic human sensory perception. Understanding the unique invariances that DNNs develop is crucial for advancing AI. By analyzing the metamers produced by these models, researchers can gain insights into the model's perception mechanisms and identify areas for improvement. This knowledge can guide the development of more sophisticated models that not only perform tasks with human-like accuracy, but also see and hear the world more like we do. In conclusion, the MIT study on neural networks' unique perceptions offers a fascinating glimpse into the complex world of machine learning and AI. By uncovering the divergent ways in which DNNs perceive stimuli compared to humans, this research paves the way for future advancements in AI that could one day lead to models that truly see the world through our eyes.
As we continue to unravel the mysteries of neural networks, we move one step closer to bridging the gap between human and machine intelligence, opening up limitless possibilities for the future of technology. Now moving from the complexities of artificial perception, let's examine how early stage product development benefits from different prototyping approaches like Concierge and Wizard of Oz. What's the difference between Concierge and Wizard of Oz prototyping, and how do they impact the early stages of product development? Today, we're diving into these two lean startup methods that, despite their common confusion, serve distinct purposes in the product development journey. Through examples of real-world applications and a clear breakdown of their differences, we'll uncover the value each method brings to the table. Let's start by exploring the Wizard of Oz prototyping method, which has been instrumental for companies like Aardvark and Cardmunch. These companies managed to create effective prototypes without any initial technological development. Aardvark connected people with questions to those with expertise, while Cardmunch transcribed business cards better than any optical character recognition, OCR system, available at the time. The secret? Both companies used human beings to fill in for the technology they were simulating. Cardmunch utilized Amazon's Mechanical Turk and Aardvark relied on interns. This approach allowed them to deliver their core value propositions without the immediate need for building complex algorithms. The key to Wizard of Oz prototyping lies in its user experience. To the user, the product appears to function exactly as promised, albeit with a slight delay due to human processing times. This method allows companies to test and refine hypotheses about their solution's value proposition without the immediate need for technological development. On the other side, we have concierge testing, exemplified by companies like Wealthfront and Food on the Table. Unlike Wizard of Oz, concierge testing involves no illusion of technology. Services are performed manually, with the customer fully aware of the human touch. Wealthfront offered wealth management advice through direct personal interactions, while Manuel Russo of Food on the Table would physically accompany customers on their shopping trips. This method provides a significantly higher value proposition due to the personalization and direct human interaction involved. The critical difference between these two methods lies in the user experience and the visibility of the human element. In Wizard of Oz testing, the human aspect is hidden, simulating the intended product experience. In contrast, concierge testing makes this element visible, often enhancing the perceived value of the service due to the personalized attention and care. These methods also differ in their research purposes. Wizard of Oz testing is evaluative, allowing companies to test specific hypotheses about their solution's value proposition. It's ideal for when you have a defined idea of what your solution should be. Conversely, concierge testing is generative, suitable for situations where the solution is still unclear. This approach allows for direct interaction with customers, gathering feedback and insights that can guide the development of a more defined solution hypothesis. Real-world examples of these methods in action highlight their effectiveness. Aardvark and Cardmunch were able to quickly validate the demand and functionality of their services without upfront technological investment. Similarly, Wealthfront and Food on the Table used concierge testing to deeply understand their customers' needs, laying the groundwork for scalable technological solutions. It's essential to recognize that these methods are not interchangeable. Each serves a specific purpose in the product development process. Misapplication can lead to flawed reasoning and business models. Wizard of Oz is best for refining and evaluating a well-defined solution hypothesis, while concierge testing excels in the exploratory phase, helping to uncover and define what the solution could be. In conclusion, Understanding the nuances between Concierge and Wizard of Oz prototyping is crucial for any lean startup looking to efficiently test and develop their product. By choosing the right method for the right stage and goal, startups can save valuable time and resources, ultimately leading to a more successful and user-centered product. Remember, 
The journey to creating a compelling product is as strategic as it is creative, and knowing when and how to leverage these methods can make all the difference. Now let's turn our attention to how leadership plays a crucial role in the effective scaling of Agile within organizations. What does it really take to scale Agile effectively within an organization? And why does leadership play such a crucial role in its success or failure? Today, we're delving into the fascinating world of Agile scaling, uncovering the pivotal role of leadership, and exploring the nuanced challenges and strategies for fostering a thriving Agile environment. At the heart of scaling Agile is the recognition that better and faster outcomes are the goal for leaders in today's dynamic business landscape. Many leaders turn to Agile as the path to achieve these outcomes, yet the journey is often fraught with misunderstandings about what Agile truly entails. It's not merely a set of steps to be followed in isolation. Agile scaling requires a deep understanding of the unique dynamics within each organization and each team. One of the most striking insights from our exploration is the profound impact leadership has on the success of Agile initiatives. Interviews with 18 subject matter specialists and a comprehensive literature review have underscored a clear message. The approach and attitude of leaders towards Agile can make or break its implementation. Leaders who excel in scaling Agile recognize the importance of tailoring Agile practices to the unique needs of their teams. They see failure as a stepping stone to success and measure success in ways that reflect true agility. These leaders are adept at fostering a culture of empowerment, allowing teams the autonomy to develop their own distinctive culture and DNA, crucial for Agile to flourish. Conversely, leaders who struggle with Agile often impose their vision with rigidity, stifling innovation and morale. This top-down approach contradicts the very essence of Agile, which thrives on empowerment and autonomy. A notable example of this is the misalignment in roles, where individuals are placed in Agile-specific roles like Scrum Master without the necessary skills or training, undermining team cohesion and effectiveness. The Spotify model of scaling Agile is often cited in discussions about Agile success. Spotify's emphasis on a culture-driven rather than a technically prescriptive approach to Agile has been a beacon for many. However, what works for Spotify may not work for another organization, highlighting the importance of leaders understanding and adapting to the unique cultural dynamics within their own organizations. Leadership's role in scaling Agile extends beyond understanding to actively creating an environment where Agile can thrive. This means recognizing the uniqueness of each team, serving as servant leaders, and reimagining how outcomes are measured. Traditional metrics focused on productivity and cost reduction are less relevant in an Agile context, where the emphasis is on value creation, customer satisfaction, and team happiness. A particularly enlightening perspective comes from Mano Raghunandan of Johnson & Johnson Consumer Health, who underscores the importance of empathetic leadership and meeting people where they are. This approach is essential for navigating the challenges of scaling Agile, from addressing fears of lost power to overcoming the inertia of traditional organizational structures. Ultimately, the key to successful Agile scaling lies in leaders' willingness to embrace change, empower their teams, and measure success in new, more meaningful ways. As organizations strive to become more agile, the role of leadership in guiding, supporting, and enabling this transformation cannot be overstated. The journey may be complex, but with the right leadership approach, the rewards of a truly agile organization are within reach. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of Innovation Pulse. If you enjoyed our insights and are eager to learn more, the Enlight Me app is just a tap away. Expand your knowledge with personalized content on over 20 diverse topics, from crypto to health and beyond, all curated to fit your interests. Download the Enlight Me app now at the Apple Store or Google Play, or visit the enlightme.ai website. Stay curious, stay enlightened.